Hello again and welcome to Virtual Crafts. Before moving any further into this series, anyone who is learning Linux must have a slight idea of how Linux directory structure looks like. Now if you are somebody who has been using Windows for a lot of time and has recently shifted to Linux, you must have noticed that the directory structure of both uh, Windows and Linux differs a lot. So for a quick comparison, I have a Windows directory structure on the right side and the Linux's uh, directory structure on the left side. Now if you've been using Windows, you must have noticed that in Windows we have disk drives, C, D, E, F, so on and so forth. As many disks you want to create as long as you're inside the limit of your physical hard disk. Now in one of these drives we keep our operating system, which is Windows, and that is generally placed in local disk C. On the left side you can see the directory structure of Linux, and in this structure we do not have uh, local drives as we used to have in Windows, rather we have a single root directory and everything is placed inside. I'll explain Linux's directory structure in detail in this video. In this picture, I wanted to uh, depict the difference between the both operating systems directory structures. So moving on, if we have a look at a compressed uh, directory structure of Linux, we have a single top directory which is shown as a forward slash. Now this is our root directory. In Linux, everything is placed inside this root directory, right? So this is a kind of a point of origin for the directory structure. In this root directory, we then have multiple directories. We have slash bin, slash etc, home, temp, user, var, and many more. Now this is a short version of the directory structure just to explain the idea. I have a detailed structure coming ahead. So if you move on, you've noticed that the topmost directory in the structure is the forward slash directory, which is also called as the root directory. And inside the root directory, there are multiple subdirectories, and each of these subdirectories serve a purpose. Now this is CentOS 7's file system hierarchy. Now there are a lot of directories in the directory structure. Uh, these are the ones that are uh, really important and everyone must know about and uh, some of these I'll be going through in the rest of the video. So let's start with the home directory. Now this directory contains the data of all the users you currently have on this OS. Now generally in every operating system we can have multiple users, right? So in Windows we used to have users and now in Linux Every user that is created on the operating system, a directory for that particular user is created in the home directory. And the home directory contains the subdirectories, one for each particular user that has been created on this OS. Now to show you this, let me move to my CentOS. Now if I go to my file explorer, in here I will go to other locations, I will go to computer, and here I have the home directory and when I open it currently I have only one user named virtual crafts and I have only one subdirectory in this home directory. So assuming I had multiple users on this uh, operating systems there would be multiple subdirectories here each one for that particular user. If I open it I will have the default directories for every user there are. So let's move on. Next we have slash root directory. Now this slash root directory is not the same as just single forward slash directory. That single forward slash is the point of origin for the file structure. This slash root directory is the root user's home directory. Now in Linux there is always a default root user that has uh, root privileges that has more privileges than a standard non-root user. So the data of the root user is in this slash root directory and the subdirectory of a single or multiple non-root users will be placed inside the home directory just as we have seen now. Next we have slash boot directory. This uh, directory contains our bootloader files. Uh, these are the files that are required to boot your system. Now in Windows these are placed inside the uh, Windows directory which is local disk C usually. So in Linux we have the bootloader files in the slash boot directory. Next we have slash bin directory. Now all the commands that we execute on a Linux terminal that are executables, that are binaries, as the name of this subdirectory depicts, those executables, those binaries are stored in this slash bin directory. So the executables of all the commands that we run on the terminal are placed inside this slash bin directory. If I move to my CentOS again and show you how this works, now if I run any command, let us say ls, this will list all the files in the current directory. And when I press enter, the executable of ls 
that was placed in the slash bin directory has been executed and it has shown me the results on the terminal. Now let us move to the bin folder and see the executable of this ls where it is placed. I'll go to my file explorer. Here I will go to other locations and inside the computer I have this bin directory and when I open this directory there are multiple files and all of these are executable files for all the commands that can be run on uh, the Linux. Now there are tons of commands I cannot even scroll all the way down. So if I search for the command ls that we just executed on the terminal we will find the executable of this command here. Now every time we type any of these commands on the terminal their executables are executed from this directory. Okay so moving forward next we have slash sbin directory. Now this directory is same as the bin directory. It contains the binaries of some commands but uh, this directory contains specifically the commands related to the system. So this directory contains the system management commands like uh, if you're checking the uh, information for your LANs you'll run ifconfig or if you're shutting down your computer you will shut down or halt or I mean any command that is uh, related to your system is in the sbin directory. Next we have uh, in the etc directory. In the etc directory we have the configuration files of all the services that are running on the system. Now if you are new to Linux I am assuming you don't know how services are run on the Linux. Now in some of the future videos uh, we will see how to run the Apache service if you are creating websites on Linux. How you uh, can run the Samba service and tons of other services. So don't worry about that if you don't know it yet. We will learn that in a while. So all the services that are running on the system they have text based configuration files and those configuration files are placed in the etc directory. Next we have lib directory. This directory contains the libraries of the executables that are placed in the bin directory. Now the executable files or programs that are placed in bin and sbin they are using some shared libraries. Shared or unshared I will not use the word shared. Those libraries are placed in the slash lib directory. Next we have slash media directory. In some of the Linux distributions such as SUSE Linux this directory is used to mount external devices such as a, a CD drive, a DVD drive, a floppy drive. Next we have a slash mount directory. Now in Fedora and Red Hat we use the mount directory to mount external devices such as CDs, DVDs and floppy devices to the operating system. Uh, next we have the slash TMP directory. This directory contains the temporary files created by you or by the system. When you are installing new services or uh, let's say we will be seeing that in future that if you are creating a website there are some temporaries that are created and they are placed inside this slash temporary folder. A directory is basically a folder. Now what we refer to as folder in Windows we refer to that same thing as a directory in Linux. Next we have slash where. Now this directory contains the variable data. All the files that keep on changing on every run of the service they are present in this where directory. Now one example of these kind of files is the log files. Every time you run a service the logs are generated. Now these logs are generated dynamically and they are a variable data. So that is placed inside the slash where directory. So these are some of the important directories that you need to know about in a Linux uh, directory structure. There are many more which are not as important as these. So you can uh, skip them for now and we will be seeing them uh, along the way as we need them. So that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, from the next video we will be formally seeing and executing the commands. If you like the video please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon next to it to receive the updates of the latest videos. Thank you and see you in the next video.